we've talked to Robert and, and players and all that stuff about Zach and, and a lot of what you guys have talked about with how you see differences is off the field and stuff like that. When do you expect to see the changes on the field or have like really prevalent changes on the field? You're like, wow, that's a significant jump year one to two. I can see it right now. You know, I, I can just see how much faster he's going through his progression, how much faster he's, um, you know, taking off when something's not there. Uh, just the how much more comfortable he is in this system. Uh, it, it really shows in the meeting room, which obviously you guys don't see every single day. Um, not just because he's answering all the right questions, just the, his demeanor and calmness uh, when we're talking about the offense in a, a specific play. So I see it, you know, um, but I don't think we'll all really know until we get out there for that first Sunday, you know. I mean, um, we had our first move the ball situations today. Uh, didn't didn't do so hot as an offense. Not not particularly all his problems. I mean, I called a, a keeper right into a blitz one time. You know, so I put him in a bad situation. He dirted the ball. Who knows what he would have done last year in his first call it period as a rookie? You know, so um, I see improvements every single day, and uh, and I, I know he can feel that too. Two periods with the first team. You know, when you're in move the ball and they're not they're not moving the ball. Yeah, I mean, you know, no matter. What situation you're ones, twos, threes, whatever, whatever move the ball we're in, what even if it's a scripted period, I mean, you just you want to see execution, and, and ultimately we didn't execute in those, uh, you know, with the ones. Um, I was pleased with what the twos and threes did, particularly running the football, um, hit some pass or uh, hit some big plays in the pass game, but um, ultimately, you know, when when the ones were out there, we didn't get it done. How critical do you think the continuity is of being here for your yourself as second year here with this group, with this program? For the guys that, that were here last year, obviously starting with Zach, and, yeah. and and how much will that manifest itself? Do you think? No, it's it's huge. You know, just um, anytime you can get into a year two, because nothing's guaranteed in this league, obviously, um, and and you have predominantly a lot of the same guys. Uh, it's just you're not teaching just from you know the, from ground zero. I mean, these guys came in uh, in OTAs and had. Uh, you know, a good idea of what this offense was supposed to be about. I, th I thought we had a great OTAs, both in the classroom and on the field. And then when they came back, just just the comfortability that they have with this offense. Actually, I, I was thinking about this yesterday. Just, I'm, at, I, I'm I'm very pleased with even the even the young guys, how how far along they are. You know, with the scheme and all that. We have a long way to go from an execution standpoint, but but the knowledge of it is uh, is huge. What did you see from uh, What did you see from Makai? You know, the way he came back. For camp and kind of the way he's handled being on the right side. Yeah, no, I've been I've been super pleased with uh, Mackay, and on top of it, it, it was one just good to get him back out there. You know, just to have him on the football field. I mean, he is as I've said so, so many times, he's just a massive, massive human being. And if he can just be out there every single day like he has been, and just battling and battling like all the other guys um, to get himself prepared to play in the preseason, but obviously ultimately to get uh, prepared to play Baltimore. Um, it's it's been good and it helps the Jets for sure that, that he's out there. You had an offensive line and, and when you were with San Francisco, that was pretty good and able to enforce as well. Do you see the chance to replicate that here with the grouping you guys yeah, have? I, now? I sure hope so. I mean, I, we're going to lean on those guys. You know, um, not saying you know that we're, we're young around them in, in some aspects, uh, but up front we those guys have played a lot of football. And I know Mackay's still semi young, especially because he didn't play last year, ABT, but but um, you know, the other three have played a lot of ball and uh, and we're gonna lean on them heavily. Um, and uh, I expect them to do really, really good things. With Mackay, I know you guys decided to put him at right tackle this season. What, what do you what do you like about him on that side as opposed to him playing left tackle, I guess? I, I it's not whether I like right or left, and it's just more about uh, you know, What's going to be best for the for the you know up front and the and the, the five? Last quite a bit last year, obviously had a couple of injury things going on. How much better is he going to be this year? Yeah, I think kind of kind of similar to what I was saying earlier. Just his his comfort level with the system, just hearing the play calls, knowing uh, what we need to get done. Um, he knows the speed of this game now, uh, you know, because again, every every rookie is going to be a little bit different. And um, you know, toward that middle part of the year, I thought he, you know, as we all saw, he was really hitting his stride, and unfortunately um, missed those last five games. But uh, really, really pleased with where he's at. I know um, there's still a long, long way to go for him. Uh, I know what his expectation and standard is for himself, and and I know uh, I hold the same one for him. What kind of progression have you seen from Garrett from the spring? Through this early part it's of training, kinda, yeah, kind of similar to uh, you know uh, Elijah in terms of just just that comfort level. You know, when you're a rookie in a first year system, 
it's hard to lean on really any of the other players because they're still learning the system too. You can obviously get some nuggets from them and stuff like that and how it's going to be out on the field. Uh, but Elijah really didn't have anyone to, to ask kind of the nuances of questions last year. Now Garrett gets to pick off of Elijah and, and Corey, not just from a how do I get stuff done on the field, but also from a schematic standpoint. So um, pleased with where he's at. Again, just kind of like I was saying with Elijah, I mean, you know, there's, there's more out there for him. Where do you see, I mean, Elijah Moore had a really good stretch last year, that one stretch where he was healthy, and of course he got injured, but where do you see him being better this year, and what areas of his game? Um, I, I just think it's probably the consistency level of, you know, uh, and, and I thought he was really consistent through that, through that stretch of games, but um, not really one specific area, just him going out, just understanding that the expectation is for him to dominate every single time he's running a route. And I know he has that mindset when he goes out there and he knows what he's doing like he does. Um, I think good things are going to happen for him. You, see, uh, you kind of alluded to it earlier, but Zach, when he's under pressure, how does his decision making differ this year compared to last year? I think, you know, last year, um, and, and it's all young quarterbacks are trying to do so right by going through their progression, stuff like that. and. Sometimes you're thinking about the progression. If you're thinking about the progression, you can't go play quarterback. I don't. I don't think he's having to think about the progression as much now. Uh, he's just playing the position, and so when things break down um, and he's making decisions faster, he can decide what's best. You know, was it scramble like he did today? I mean, I don't. I don't know if that play was real, the, the the touchdown, but he went on two. I didn't tell him to go on two. He got the jump from an aggressive D line. They let it play, and he, you know, he just scrambled out and does what you know did what Zach does. About guys leaning on guys who've been in the system. I saw one time today where the, the running back from NC State came out and Michael Carter kind of went over to him and explained something. He's been here for a year, but is that Carter? Is he, he kind of that kind of guy yeah. that, that's. MC was special a year ago in terms of just the, the kind of teammate and, and kind of man he is. I, you know, and I, I think we all kind of see that. Just I'm sure him up here at the podium, but, but being with him every day, it's uh, we're lucky to have him here. and. Uh, you know, like I was saying with the offensive line from a physicality standpoint and, and being out on the field, we're going to lean on them. We're going to lean on Michael Carter to be a leader for us in all facets, you know, not just for the running backs, but for every group. He's earned that right, the way he shows up every single day, the way he works, uh, his attitude. Um, I, I love that kid. What is Brees adding to that group, and, and how did he and Michael complement each other? Yeah, I mean, Brees, like I've, like I've stated before, I mean, it's you're getting a, a talented dude that's, you know, got some, some – size to him that uh in in, in a speed element that, that i mean he kind of just sneaks up on defenders like it just it almost looks kind of effortless uh the way he's moving you know and again it's just going to be how fast can he adjust to this game and the grind that is not just running the football pet but like the daily grind of what it's going to take every single day and again i expect guys like michael carter and the rest of the vets to, to pull him along how did you know how, how old flacco was and how long he's been around what, what was your assessment be as the biggest kid on our team. Yeah, uh, he's uh, Joe. Joe is. Um, I didn't know Joe un until obviously we traded for him. I, I, he was in Denver with a, a coach, uh, Rich Gangarello, was their offense coordinator there, who was the uh, quarterback coach at San Fran for the, our first two years there. So I knew of Joe, and uh, the, the feedback we got was amazing. Obviously, Joe Douglas knew Joe very well. Um, he's just he's cool, Joe. He just shows up every day and and. It, it, it matters to him to to do right and, and be as good as he can be every single day. And I, I think that rubs off on a lot of the guys. Like it's, you know, it's, um, he's prepared. He's a professional. How valuable is he to Zach? I mean, he's invested in that, is he not? Yeah, totally. I mean, our, I really like our quarterback room in terms of like when that door's shut and, and just us being in there and being able to talk through whatever we're talking through, whether it be life or obviously X's and O's. Um, Zach leans on him. Uh, but at the same time, I think probably more than anything, I think it's just, you know, Zach and Mike watching how Joe goes about his business. Like I call a bad play, like how fast can the ball just spit out of his hands, you know? And um, that's just stuff that, that Joe has all the years that he's played, just get the ball in your hands. Usually good things will happen. Uh, Saturday, he made a, a throw in the, the back left corner of the end zone <laughs> for a touchdown. It was yeah. pretty ridiculous. He's made a couple other ones today. I mean, does it look like his arms lost anything? I, I, I can't totally speak. For, because I wasn't with him live ever. Um, I'm going to guess no. I'm sure if you asked him, he'd say no. That throw that you're uh, talking about was incredible. It was, if you're going to make that throw, even though it was potentially maybe the wrong read because that corner was so deep, you better make the throw. And he made the throw, and there we are scoring a touchdown. It was awesome. Uh, 
talking the other day about how Garrett has like a little bit of wiggliness at the top of his routes. Uh, we talked about like what his athleticism can do for him in terms of making catches, but as a route runner, how much does that help him get to where he needs to be? Yeah, he's just, he's really loose. You know, he's really loose in the lower half. It's uh, a very unique trait um, that he possesses. He can get really far outside of his frame. Uh, like to equate it, I think sometimes it's easier like a like a basketball player crossing over Kyrie Irving, how how far they can get outside their frame and play on their insteps, and still have body control. And some guys, particularly some of the bigger guys, it's just a struggle for them because they're bigger. That's that's their superpower. His is is that lower half that is very unique. And then on top of it, he's got that basketball background um, that uh, you know his his body control when the ball is in the air is uh, you know it's very evident. How would, how would you assess Denzel now compared to last training camp? Same, same as uh, kind of saying about a lot of guys, Zach, Elijah, all of them. I mean, just his comfort level. Um, that uh, 2020 class never really saw what the NFL was all about, just from a training camp, OTAs, just all the restrictions that we all went through in life with COVID and the NFL. Um, he got his first, in my opinion, true offseason and he hit it and you can see it with his body and, and you can see it with him out there making plays. Um, is he there yet? No, none of our guys are there yet, uh, but he's made such great strides. I've loved the way he's attacked it. I love the way uh, he's attacked it in the run game uh, and he's putting himself in a great situation. Thank you, everyone. Sorry. How's it feel? Oh, it's still a five and a half. <laughs> <laughs>